Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Diana Driscoll, Clinical Director at POTS Care. We wanted to reach out to you because so many people have asked me if POTS patients are more susceptible to coronavirus. Although there's much we don't know about this virus and we're still learning every day, there's some things that we can presume based on what we know about other viruses, including the flu, SARS, etc. And as we learn more, we can share more. Currently, we know with other viruses, we want to keep our nasal passages moist. So when the nasal passages are dry or if they're cracks or fissures, etc., viruses can more easily attach. So if you want to keep your nasal passages moist, I'd highly recommend it. Say with salt water spray or saline spray, that can be helpful. There's a xylitol nose spray um, that could be helpful. I found a spray that also had some gel um, that could keep it moister longer. Now zinc lozenges have also been shown to make a little bit harder for cold viruses to attach to mucous membranes. Although this may or may not be effective for the coronavirus, we just don't know. Remember that too much zinc though can cause an imbalance with copper. So it's recommended that you don't have these zinc lozenges for longer than say a week at a time. Now do know there is no rule saying we can't have more than one infection. You certainly don't want to have to worry about a cold or even the flu with the fear that this could actually be coronavirus, right? Nor do you want to weaken your body with a cold or flu should there be any chance you need to fight coronavirus later. So I would do everything you can to prevent most any upper respiratory infection or flu at this point. Now asthmatics are prone to inflamed airways and that can make it easier for viruses to attach. So if you are asthmatic, please stay on your medication and be sure you have a good supply of your medication at home. Of course, you don't want to smoke and it's just another good reason not to smoke is um, that lung inflammation and mucous membrane inflammation that can result, which makes it easier to suffer with significant problems like advanced pneumonia if you do get a viral infection. Now, if you're one who requires immune suppression, any form of a steroid, for example, you may be more prone to catching a viral infection such as coronavirus. Although POTS patients are all a bit different, no two are alike, actually, we have some commonalities that make us end up with POTS. One commonality is either an immune system that's in overdrive or ironically a decreased immune system. Now if your immune system is in overdrive, much like an autoimmune condition for example, the last thing you want to do is increase your immune system. At POTS Care we do a fair amount of blood work to explore immunity to help determine if a patient has either an overactive or an underactive immune system if you don't know how your immune system is affected. One way you can approach this is instead to control the oxidation, which is a result of either an immune system that's in overdrive or that is one is, that's impaired. Oxidation is a necessary consequence of inflammation. All inflammatory cells spit out a lot of chemicals. One of them is reactive oxygen species and it's highly oxidative. Oxidation damages blood vessels, it damages tissue. Ultimately, it can change our brain chemistry. One toward higher glutamate, which makes us more prone to anxiety or panic. Kind of an OCD presentation too. So to help control this, we need antioxidants. And although blueberries and other antioxidant foods are really great, I personally found them to be, as a patient, inadequate to correct this level of oxidation. So the best way to correct this level of oxidation is by increasing our own glutathione, the master antioxidant, with one caveat. We do not absorb glutathione. When I was sick years ago and I was in the hospital, the doctors in the hospital recognized I needed antioxidants which I was really impressed with at the time. They started me on vitamin C, but it didn't even touch my symptoms. I went home and I tried glutathione through the skin. I tried suppositories. I tried oral, liposomal, inhaled, nothing. It wasn't until I went to N-acetylcysteine, which is our body's limiting factor to making our own glutathione, an amino acid, that I felt rather immediate relief. I ended up carrying that bottle around with me and thought, okay, we've got to do better than N-acetylcysteine alone. 
And instead, I came up with something called NAC Max, which may be very helpful for you. What it is, is the necessary N-acetylcysteine, but I added two ingredients that then recycle the glutathione that we make ourselves. There's also just enough selenium in there to help with one of the enzymes necessary in the production of glutathione. So do check it out. It's at vagusnervesupport.com. It's called NAC Max. Some experts in chronic fatigue syndrome are sharing this information. I want to be sure you understand that there have been no studies to see if it's helpful in the coronavirus infection per se. We do not know if NAC Max will help with the coronavirus, okay? But we know it's very effective in some aspects of chronic fatigue syndrome and POTS. With these conditions, we want to be our healthiest when confronted with a chance of viral infections, and this is where NAC Max comes in. Because word is spreading fast, I've been asked if there's enough NAC Max in stock. At this point, we're fully stocked. So if you need it, you can still find it at vagusnervesupport.com or on Amazon. Should there ever be a problem with Amazon deliveries, vagusnervesupport.com should be able to get this to you. Another mention is a good multivitamin. So many of us struggle with no, low nutrient levels and it's not a good time to be deficient. So if this sounds like you, I would absolutely get a good multivitamin. I think the precautions we're pretty much all taking, we don't wanna forget those, are common sense of course, but social distancing is important and most of us who's been patients for a while are completely familiar with that. We kind of live in social distancing, right? What I would suggest to you though, and I remember as a patient, the only socialization I had was to get on the internet and I found that oftentimes it was a fairly negative and even toxic environment. I think for so many people, POTS and related conditions cause so much suffering, right? People are so frustrated because no one's really helping them find the underlying problems. People become angry, justifiably. Personalities tend to go out the door. So I would encourage you to limit your time on social media with sick people. Instead, try to stay on some more positive sites if possible. If you can get outside, that can be so helpful. If not, if you can even be near a window where you can see greenery or if you do not have that, get a plant and put it inside, that's also helpful. While surrounded by so much fear and uncertainty, please take time to focus on what we have to be grateful for. It may be as simple as clean sheets or sunshine through your window, but there's always something. And if possible, don't panic. We already have so many fears about our own illness when going through an invisible illness, right? The last thing we need is fears of a coronavirus on top of it. But if you get really depressed or the panic is through the roof, don't hesitate to reach out to a professional. There are some psychologists now online where they will offer telemedicine and that might be helpful. I'd recommend staying aware, but try not to focus too closely on the news. Keep in touch with your local area and then exit it once in a while. Very important. Now here at POTS Care, we're very aware of what's going on. We're trying to stay ahead of the game. So although we usually see two to three patients per week routinely, what we've done is spread them out so that no patient will run into another patient and in between patients, we clean the office very thoroughly. At this point, we're still seeing patients, but we're also able to offer telemedicine for some patients. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can help you. Uh, we're at um, potscare.com. And if not, we'll see you when the world has moved past all this, okay? This will end someday. This is not forever. Until then, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And from all of us at Pods Care, we wanted to send you a virtual hug. Bye-bye.